Hello and welcome to today's Summer of STEAM 2018 video. Today we're learning about jelly bean genetics and are combining math and biology. For today's experiment you will need jelly beans, paper, bowls, a blindfold, and pens. Let's get started. Fill two bowls with 10 jelly beans of each color. We chose to use pink and green jelly beans. Next, create a chart like the one on screen, with one parent one column, one parent two column, and a child column. I've added a link to a printable version of this chart in the description below. To make sure that the person picking the jelly beans was being fair, we used a blindfold. You might need a hand putting the blindfold on. Next, get the person with the blindfold to pull two jelly beans at a time, one from the parent one bowl and one from the parent two bowl. The person without the blindfold will record the results, writing down which color was pulled from which bowl. After all jelly beans were pulled, you should have 20 entries. Now that we have our data, how do we figure out what to put in the child column? In our example, we used both pink and green jelly beans. If we drew a pink jelly bean from parent 1 and parent 2, the child will be a pink jelly bean. And the same goes for the green jelly beans. But what happens if you pull one of each color? If this happens, you have to look at how dominant or recessive the different jelly beans or genes are. In our example, a pink parent 1 and a green parent 2 would result in a pink child. This means the pink gene is dominant, where the green gene is recessive. We can now use these rules to fill in the rest of our chart. In our example, each parent had half pink genes and half green genes. This means that there was a 50% chance of pulling a pink or green gene from each parent's bowl. When an organism has equal parts dominant and recessive gene, it is known as heterozygous. In this case, both parents are heterozygous. We can now take this knowledge and put it into a Punnett square. Our Punnett square has two sides, one side for each parent. On our vertical side, we wrote our genes that parent 1 had, and on our horizontal side, we wrote the genes that parent 2 had. To find out what each child will be, we add rows and columns and apply the same rules as before. In the top left square, you have the combination of pink from parent 1 and parent 2, resulting in a pink child. In the next square over, you have the combination of pink from one parent and green from the other, resulting in a pink child. We then repeated this process to fill out the rest of our chart. As you can see, there are three squares with pink genes showing up, and only one square with a green gene. So we can say that the child has a 25% chance of getting the green gene, or a 75% chance of getting the pink gene. These are our theoretical values, so let's see how well they match up to our experiment. On the left, I wrote the results we had for the child. Our theoretical Punnett square tells us that there's a 25% chance that the child has a green gene and a 75% chance of the child having a pink gene. Looking to our experimental values, we see that 30% of the children had a green gene and 70% had a pink gene. Because there's not a huge difference between our theoretical and experimental value, I can say that our experimental value is accurate. Now that you know how to determine the probability of a child inheriting a gene, you can try this with new combinations. We've repeated this experiment, this time using one bowl with only pink jelly beans and one bowl with only green jelly beans. When each parent has 100% of only one gene type, they are known as homozygous. Now let's see what the probability looks like in the Punnett square. Just like before, we've set up our Punnett square and are filling it in using our rules. This time, all four squares are a pink plus green combination. And as we know, this results in a pink gene. In this situation, the child has a 0% chance of inheriting the green gene, but a 100% chance of inheriting the pink gene. I hope you now know how to calculate the probability of inheritance and see how closely linked math and biology really are. If you'd like to learn more about how inheritance works, you can check out my video on Mendelian inheritance. I've added a link to it in the description below. If you try out this experiment and calculate your own jelly bean genetic probability calculations, I'd love to see them. Be sure to share photos with me on Instagram at stem underscore files. Stay tuned for our next Summer of Steam video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share.